Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of the Perfect Game High School Notebook. I'm Tyler. As always, joined here by Colt. Colt, we've made it to May, which means we're under a month until the summer travel ball circuit kicks off. I know I'm really looking forward to the, the next four somewhat calm weeks of baseball before we really get rolling. How about you? Oh, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely definitely ramping up. And, you know, we got JUCO postseason getting ready to roll here. We've got, you know, the last couple of weeks of the Division One regular season before they get into their conference tournaments, regional, super regional. So it's, uh, it's getting ready to be go time here, ready to roll. Jump right, right over to the rankings, uh, starting the top 10, up at one, not, not much surprise. Buford, they swept their first playoff series 2-0. Uh, to zero. They now match up with the Pope team, who's 25-8 and eight on the season coming in, so that should be a good one to watch there in Georgia. Um, Thousand Oaks, they're now 16-0. and 0. They hold right there at three. Uh, Barb, they cruise through their first two rounds of playoffs, um, and with Orchard Lakes uh, losing their first game of the season, they get to move up a spot to four. Uh, and they've got a rematch against Sam Houston looming in the next round if both them and Sam Houston can come to take care of business this week. Uh, moving forward, Jesuits, Home and Douglas, uh, they both won their district tournaments last week. They hit into regionals in Florida. Uh, Lake Travis wrapped up a district title with a couple of regular season games left to play. And then Hamilton um, stays hot. They put together a 3 0 week and they, they stay right there at 10. Yeah, and then, you know, moving into that 10 to 20 range, kind of a lot of the similarities, kind of what we saw there in the 1 to 10. But, um, you know, we've got, you know, a lot of teams getting ready or starting their postseason, a lot of teams wrapping up the end of their regular season with, with a couple wins. Um, one, one movement we did want to touch on there is Baylor moving up to 13 after they come off a big win over Fairview there. Um, and kind of a, a, a big rivalry there in the state of Tennessee, two of the kind of top teams there. So Baylor comes away with a win there, and, you know, it's, it's really been a, a solid start for Baylor. They've played, you know, six teams that have, Six games against teams that have been or or are currently in the top 50. Um, you know, on the on the hill, Jay Dillon, Patrick Johnson, Luke Carden, kind of leading the way for the staff there uh, with a 175 team ERA for them there. And Cooper Kinney and Vadis Valensis, excuse me if I said that wrong, both both kind of leading the team there offensively. Both the South Carolina commits hitting over 400 with seven bombs apiece, and you know got got Baylor rolling there to 21 and three start as they wrap up the end of their. Uh, regular season play. Looking down at 21 to 30, uh, you can see Heritage Hall and Jay Sarah there in the middle who have both been very good over the last few weeks. Jackson Do Job, who we all know simply hasn't been fair for his last couple outings. He had that perfect game where he struck out all 15 hitters he faced. Uh, but Jay Sarah is of, of importance to us there at 25. They started this pre uh, season at two, really struggled early, but they're looking like the team that we, we thought they were coming into the season. They've won nine in a row. Uh, they have a 3-0 and start in the Trinity League. Um, they had a sweep of Matter Day. Uh, Colt, they've got a tough-looking schedule for the rest of the regular season in the Trinity League. But with that kind of roster, you think they've got a chance to put up a ton of wins, right? Yeah, you know, and, and you touched on it. They've got uh, a, a tough league there in the Trinity League, one of the probably, I mean, the best, if not one of the best leagues across the country. And they're going to match up with uh, Santa Margarita, who we've got at 36 this week for three games. Um, they've got Olu there at the back end, who comes in at 15 this week. Um, so, I mean, you know, a, a loaded loaded league there in the Trinity League, San Margarita, led by seniors Colby Wallace, Ethan Flanagan. And then, you know, you look forward to, to kind of what they have coming in the future there with uh, Matthew Porches Jr. And then Luke Laven, Trent Cardaway, Jackson Kremer, Spencer Shannon, all, all kind of guys that are coming down the barrel there for San Margarita. Um, but, you know, I mean, Jay Sarah, like you said, stumbled early, but re really finding their way. And it's it's a lot of seniors there, so you kind of expect them to right the ship there for Jay Sarah and get things going in the right way. And Gage Jump, Luke Jouette, and David Horn, all real real three capable arms on the mound. They're going to run the fastball into the low 90s and, and kind of kind of lead that staff. Well, top 100 draft prospect Cody Schreer holds things down in the middle. And Gabe Darcy in the outfield, you know, he brings a combination of speed and power for for Jay Sarah there. Looking ahead, uh, 31 to 40, a lot of familiar faces, uh, Auburn, Owasso, Oxford, all those teams that have been in the rankings seemingly all season long. Um, they continue uh, to, to show themselves, show well, um, stick there in that range. But Trinity has been a steady riser that I've liked since we put them in the top 50. Uh, they're 19 and one now and just got a win over a pretty good Columbus North team. Uh, I'm excited to see what they'll, what they're able to do with their last 10 or so regular season games. Uh, and then, and, you know, moving on to the playoffs from there. Uh, looking at 41 to 50, uh, that's where most new teams have made their debut this spring. We've got four new teams this week, uh, three new faces, one returner. Uh, starting Wilson West Lawn out of Pennsylvania, their team we got good reviews on from our guy up in the Northeast, Johnny Mack. They're 14 and one with a perfect 9 and 0 record in conference. 
Uh, looking over to California, Ayala, they're 13 and one. They come in at 48. And then those last two teams, uh, Bishop Eustis out of New Jersey and Bainbridge out of Washington, they sneak in. They've had big pitching performances here over the last couple of weeks and, you know, basically all season long from their top guys. Colt, they're a few thousand miles away from each other, but I mean, there really wasn't much difference between what Ian Ritchie and Anthony Salamento did last week. Yeah, you know, and, and Ian Ritchie takes the mound. You know, one of the top right-handed arms in that 22 class comes in at number three for right-handed pitchers um, in our 22 rankings. But he took the mound for Brainbridge, goes 18 strikeouts in his no-hitter. You know, really had command of all three pitches, fastball into the mid-90s, had the slider working for him, had the, had the changeup, really commanding all three pitches in the zone, out of the zone, kind of being able to do what he wants. And it's, it's something, you know, that – that we've seen a lot of in his perfect game uh, outings. And then Anthony Salamento, like you said, um, for Bishop Eustis, he had North Carolina commit there. He's also going to run the fastball into the mid-90s from the left side. It's a real long, loose, kind of free-flowing arm action, um, kind of a little bit different, but, you know, good slider, tunnels the, tunnels the slider well off the fastball there. He punches out 11 in his start. And then, uh, you know, kind of a – uh, performance I wanted to touch on there in Alabama. Um, Charlie Keller goes two home runs on Saturday night for Mobile Christian, bringing his total up to 13 on the season as uh, Mobile Christian advances into the, the next round of their state playoffs. So many big performances happening all over the country. We've got so much more exciting baseball coming here in the next uh, next month as we head toward the travel ball circuit. Uh, continue to send in your highlights. We're, we're so excited to see what, what state playoffs look like all over the country, and uh, we'll catch you again next week.